Good morning. Hi, this is Cheryl. I'm a client of the New York City Department for the Aging's Senior Community Services Employment Program. Um, they've been very helpful. The money's been helpful. It's given me the opportunity to interact and interface with other individuals. And since COVID-19, I miss dealing with my friends, learning new things. But another problem that I have with, the, with this program is their association with the, an agency called the City Meals on Wheels program. According to the City Meals on Wheels program, their responsibility is to provide services to individuals who are homebound, to seniors who are homebound. The question is, am I homebound? Let's check that. I'll walk you through my apartment and let you see if I'm homebound or not. Okay. Go into my bedroom. Let's look at my bedroom. Turn it around for you to see. It's a little messy, but as you see, I have, I have an office in my bedroom. I'm, what I'm going to do at this point, I'm going to go to my computer. I was able to download the, the City Meals for Wheel, City Meals on Wheels, Char 90 for 2017. According to their mission statement, the mission statement is to, let me make this 100%, is to provide a lifeline of nutritious food and human company to homebound elderly New Yorkers. Question is, am I homebound? Uh, let's see. Uh, another thing that's interesting, I'm going to go down and do some look through their people who are on their program. Gail Green, Joseph Cohen, Joan Tish, Daniel Bulund, uh, a Niederlander, who else? Bartfeld, um, um, Baylor, Blood, Boardman, Wells, Cohen, Daum, Fishman, Futterman, Glazier, Wells, Goldman, Grossman, Kazerer, Wells, Pomerantz, Lisa Rosenblum, Speck, Stein, Steinbrenner, Tisch, Shapiro. Nearly a great deal of individuals on this list of employees, volunteers, they're all Ashkenazi Jews. You see that for yourself. Um, Beth Shapiro for the fiscal year 2017, she made $296,378. Robert Chapman made $180,000, $180,851. And uh, Rachel Shero, another Ashkenazi Jew, made $165,603. Many of them volunteered, but there's no question that although this agency claims to provide services to um, homebound individuals, I guess the vast majority of them being black, the staff is made up of mostly Ashkenazi Jews. Now, I went to their office last week. I drove to their office last week. While I'm filming this, I'm going to also uh, make sure that I get in my car to let people see that I'm not homebound. But uh, that, at this point, is neither here nor there. Question is, 
if I'm homebound, and if I need them to come over to give me human contact. Let's go through my apartment to see what I've accomplished. Obviously, I have an office in my apartment. Look. I bet I, I have to make my bed up a little, a little later. I'll do that a little later. But look. Here's a laser printer. This uh, prints about 40 pages a minute. I have another printer. Uh, yesterday, I purchased a router, and I set my router up on. I set my router up to use with my other computers. Let's walk through my apartment. I have another office in my bedroom. Yes, I ride a bike, not homebound. This is another computer that I set up on my network, and here's another computer that again I set up on my network. Let me push this back a little. Sorry for that. Okay. Is this, oh yeah, turn it off. All right, I'll turn it on later. Um, yeah, some paper because I do a lot of typing. The typing paper. Oh, here's another computer, another printer. I mean, another a laptop. Um, ink oh, for my computer. Here's my bathroom. As you see, I need a paint job, but I keep it relatively clean. This is my, uh, this is my hallway. Here's my foyer. Needs a paint job button. Here's my foyer. Here's my living room. It's not bad for a 60-year-old, but the most important thing that I would like for you, um, people to see, have a washing machine. No dishes in the sink, those are clean. Now, the issue of food. This is the first a refrigerator freezer. Full of food. I have nowhere to put any food. It is full. I have a little food here. Oops, here's a pizza. Here's some more food here. If you go into my kitchen, look, look, it's full of food. Here's my cabinet, full of food. Here's my cabinet by the stove. It's full of food. Here is food that I started collecting. I had a little of this before, but I started collecting even more of it um, after the COVID, um, after the discovery of COVID-19. Um, I have no way of knowing if the government is going to say, no more money, no more food. So I started collecting. Here's food here. Here's food here. Here's food here. Wow, what do you know? There's even more food here. Lastly, here's my other freezer and refrigerator. Here's the freezer. There is so much food in that freezer that there is nowhere for me to put anything from City Meals on Wheels. My refrigerator. There is so much food there that there's no way where for me to put anything from City Wheels on Meals. City Meals on Wheels. Obvious, I've, obviously, I've taken pretty good care of myself in the food area. So much so that I really do not need food from them. Nor do I want it. Here's some of the things that I use to cook. Gigantic cup gigantic can of coffee. I don't drink a lot of coffee, but I keep it here just in case. Coffee. A coffee maker. A blender. A instant pot. It, um, an instant pot. And yes, it works. Now, since I've established that I do not need food from this agency, from City Meals on Wheels, why do they insist on bothering me? Well, let's go see what the, 
Let's go see what the internet says. Go back to my computer. Again. Oops, that's true. You have to allow this communication. This is my uh, firewall program. Yes, I have to allow it. Yes. Now, let's go look at a website. That's on. Oh, um, this is a lawsuit that I, this is a lawsuit that I lost with the U.S. Court of Appeals. Here's me, Cheryl D. Uzamiri versus the state of New York. And I, obviously I lost it, but I'm getting ready to appeal it. But that's neither here nor there. This is what I wanted you to see. A R T S O T Sot H A H A. Sorry, I'm so slow because I'm typing with one hand. Chaim Atmol M A L L. Okay, this is what I was looking for. Racism and the Curse of Ham. This is a Jewish website. Ashkenazi Jewish website. Let's click on that. It says, in Male Jewish, Volume 15, Number 15, Mark Shapiro's post on Judaism and racism included, included the following. In 1992, a book was published by a leading member of the Satmar community entitled Aksot Hachaim. On page 52, he explained in quotes other rabbis that the reason Abraham Lincoln was killed was because he freed the blacks. This is also the reason why Kennedy was killed, because he was good to the blacks. He continued by saying that this will be the fate of any who adopt a progressive attitude toward blacks because they are meant to be enslaved. This is one of many um, negative statements that Ashkenazi Jews have tried desperately to hide from us. Part of the reason why I do not wish to do business with uh, this facility. They have too many uh, members of the Ashkenazim. This is the other reason. Um, let me go to um, get rid of this. Get rid of this. Um, let me log out of... No, I'm not going to log out of this. I'm not going to log out of this. What I'm going to do is go into my bit, bit.ly. Um, no, what I'm going to do is go into, uh, go into my PDF, my PDF folder, and I'm looking for something. Convenience. See? Here it is. Convenience. Convenience. Here. History of abuse and organic difficulties in a convenient sample of 46 ultra-orthodox males with pedophilia, it should say. Here's the report. History of abuse and organic difficulties in a convenient sample of 46 ultra-orthodox males with pedophilia. It's part of what the report says. Here it is. Results on self-report come reports combined with corroborating reports obtained from parents, educators, and medical staff together with indications in psychological tests, we found that 82.6% of participants were victims of sexual trauma as children and 87 suffered from some kind of organic vulnerability, learning disability, disinhibitions, etc. Limitations. Limitations of this small convenience sample that influence ability to generalize are discussed. Conclusion. The current survey indicates that in this sample, the ultra-orthodox male pedophile was frequently a victim of childhood sexual trauma and indicated in the, and exhibited indications of organic vulnerabilities. This is more pronounced than findings in previous studies and calls for further research in order to understand the underlying causes. I would, I want you to see a little bit more of this. Okay. Um, so what I'm going to do, yeah, I'm going to go to 
YouTube. O U T U B E dot com dot C O M. And the first thing I'm going to look for is a movie called Conventional Sins. Here it is. Okay. I'm going to turn on my Bluetooth. Okay. Okay. Devices. Okay. Connect. Now, let's see what this says. Let me turn this up a little bit so that you might be able to hear it. He, the gentleman here is, uh, be, is Melech. He's um, portraying it. Uh, when we talk about violence, yes, let's talk about a certain kind of violence that goes on in the ultra orthodox society. You mean, I mean, sexual violence. Can you talk about that? Are you familiar with it yourself? I think almost everyone there experienced it. Now, the next thing we're going to um, look for is CBS News. CBS News. News. Then I'm going to look up Jews and P E D O P H. I L I A Enter How Jewish American pedophiles hide from justice in Israel Accused pedophile seeks refuge in Israel to evade charges and the person who they're accusing here is a woman Let's go through this Let's see what channel 2 says Investigation has uncovered a loophole that allows accused and convicted American pedophiles to escape justice by moving to Israel. So Ian Lane has been following this. Let's report. stop that. Let's see what it says down here. One woman, and it's this woman, very brave. Her name is Shona Aronson. One woman who helps track suspects down says the little discussed problem is wide spread. Now, um, I've already indicated and shown proof, um, I've shown proof that uh, Israel, that the Ashkenazim, especially the religious ones, that they have a problem with pedophilia. But let's see if there's any more proof. All right? Let's see if there's any more proof. I'm going to again open up my PDF program. I'm going to go to, yes, and I'm going to type in the word pedophile again. P-E-D-O-P-H-I-L-E. -E. Okay. Okay, let's look. Um, here it is. And let me just, because I, I would prefer this to be in alphabetical order, because it's easy to find. Haaretz. Haaretz is the premier newspaper of Israel. Let's see what it says. Israel. A nation of pedophiles. Okay. Let's look some more. Open. Pedophile. Okay. Israel is becoming a refuge for pedophiles. Again, Baha Aret. Israel becoming a refuge for pedophiles warns advocate for child sex abuse victims. Hmm. Let's look at some more. Pedophile. 
Okay. Here's another one. Um, let's see. Let's see. I've already mentioned this one. Oh, this is old. His name is Avraham um, Mondrovitz. He raped about 300 Ashkenazi uh, Jewish men, raped about 300 children in Brooklyn, um, mostly Italians, but also Italian American children, but also Jewish children. And um, this used to be on YouTube, but they took down the film. But here's one where the, the accuser uh, hit him and knocked him to the ground. His name is Avraham Mondrovitz. Now, here's a people who teaches that black people are cursed and won't tell us. Here's the people who hides the pedophilia. And here's an organization where the executive staff are members of the Ashkenazim. Why the fuck do I want these motherfuckers in my house? Well, but there's one more thing, okay, that I need you to see so that you understand my train of thought, okay? I'm going to look up the word coronavirus, C-O-R-O-N-A. Let's, let's look that up. Okay. Let's see that. Orthodox, ultra-Orthodox community hit hard by, um, by uh, the coronavirus. Um, there's a specific article that I wanted you to see. Okay, here, just a second. Okay, here it is. Ashkenazi Jews the world over hit hardest by coronavirus. Ashkenazi, and this is why not, this is a Jewish newspaper. Jews the world over, when they say Jew, they're talking about Ashkenazi Jews. Jews the world over among hardest hit by coronavirus. Now you're probably wondering why they're being, why this group is being hit by, with the coronavirus. So let's look that up. Let's look that up. Okay, we're going to open and we're going to look for um, K O S H E R kosher kosher Chinese Orthodox Jews in Wuhan, China, and globalization. The Ashkenazim have been living in Wuhan for a long time, according to this uh, newspaper. This uh, article, they have factories there. Let's read this. Um, here it is. Um, just a second. Here it is. Um, I was sitting on tarmac of Beijing Capital Airport with a group of U.S.-based journalists, the only non-Chinese among 200 or so passengers waiting to take off. We were headed for Yuhon, a large city in China's heavily industrial interior known as the nation's stove cities because of its intense, humid summer heat. No, wasn't going to read that. Okay? Oh, I'm sorry. Um, I was stumped. Wuhan is not a place with a vesti vestigial Jewish presence like Harbin, where a synagogue founded by Russian Jews in the early 20th century was just reopened. It's not Kaifeng, the Silk Road town, where a Jewish communities thrived a millennium ago. Chabad, the Lubavitch sect that sends emissaries throughout the world to minister to expatriate Jews, has several outposts in large cities in China. They live there. So a lot of people don't know that the, that the Ashkenazim, especially Chabad Lubavitch, They've been living down there a long time. And they're not letting people know that it's not just the Chinese that are bringing back this disease. They're bringing it back. Now, the last thing I wanted to show you, okay, and this is on YouTube. It is a little bit on the disgusting side, but you have to see it. Just 
Jewish boy spits on I D D F. I should say not even spit, he coughs. C O U G H. No, no, I want, you need to see this. The IDF are now going through Israel to pick up the Ashkenazim, the, Ash, the religious Ashkenazim, because they're infected. A lot of them are infected. They're trying to implement the, the quarant quarantining them. I want you to see what this little boy does. I want you to see this. This is Israel. This is the IDF of Israel. See? Okay, I want to I hope that I was able to show this. Boy prepubescent ultra orthodox child knows or believes that he has COVID-19 and this son of a bitch turns around and coughs at him. Now, do you not understand? Now, do you not understand why I don't want these nasty motherfuckers in my house? Don't want them here. Not for nothing. I don't want their food. I don't want nothing from them. And I believe that I've established that I have enough food in my house where they do not need to come here. In spite of that, um, the, the New York City Department for the Aging has called me two or three times to tell me that these nasty motherfuckers are coming to my house. So now this is a warning to uh, Beth Shapiro. Anybody comes to my house I'm going to charge not them, I'm going to charge you with sexually sadistic domestic terrorism. I do not wish to deal with the Ashkenazim. In my opinion, they are a fucking nasty group of people. I'm boycotting them, and I have a fucking right to boycott them in the privacy of my home. I have enough food so that I don't have to take their nasty food, deal with their nasty ways. They're hateful, they're pedophilic. I don't want to fucking deal with them. Now, I'm going to put this film up on YouTube, along with uh, pictures that I took of my house, pictures that I took of my refrigerator, to establish that I don't fucking want to fuck with them. To me, they are the world's nastiest, fucking hateful, fucking people. Thank you. Have a good day.